Rusty Quill presents The Magnus Archives. Episode 118 The Masquerade. listening? Good. Case uh, 0071304. Statement of Evo Lensick. All right. Statement ends, I guess. Um, Harold Silvana, number 0020406. You'll probably do. All right then. 0140207, Dylan Anderson. Yeah? Okay. There's plenty more on the pile. Martin. Martin, open the door. Sorry, Elias. I can't hear you. There's a door in the way. Martin, I do not have time for this. And maybe you should make time. Unlock the door now. I thought you had a key. Martin. I'm not going anywhere. I would hurry, though, if I were you. Come on. Shut up. It's just cobwebs. There's no such thing as just cobwebs. I don't like it. Tough. Is this it? Yeah. We plant the last of it here. Then this place will go up nice. What's the range on the detonator? Same as the last time you asked. Where is everybody? Preparing, I, I guess. I haven't seen any of them since the last of... Uh, or well, whatever the hell that was went inside. Too quiet. Could be a trap. And if it is, I give this a squeeze. No more trap. And no more us. Mm. Don't fret it. And anyway, it's not like we're alone in here. <laughs> Look, there's Prince Charles. Mm. Oh, if he'd been in an accident, uh, all the Beatles. If they'd all been in separate accidents, like like Ringo was in a horrible fire or, or Paul was in a car crash. That's a classic. Yes, Tim, I remember them. The waxworks are bad. Just keep an eye on them, and if they start moving... Hit them with an axe. Sure. John? Yes? When you were, um, kidnapped, did you leave a tape recorder here? What? I don't think so. Why? Is there... Oh. Yeah. For God's sake. So where did it come from? Not important right now. Turn it on. Oh, yes, I'm where did you? Hello? What are you doing? That one. That one was Benjamin Hatendi. He went fast enough with the key. What are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you not just look into my head? Read my mind? What's wrong? Too busy trying to keep an eye on everything? Tell me what you're doing and why. I just thought I'd, you know, drop a couple of ideas in the old suggestion box. Turns out my suggestion is... fire. And yet you haven't set the whole archives alight. So I assume this is... what's it called? A cry for attention. Maybe I just thought it might hurt. No more than you're hurting yourself by acting out. Oh, that's it, isn't it? Martin's just acting out. I mean, Daisy's a, a rabid dog and Melanie's a potential killer. Tim's a, a, a rogue element, but Martin, oh, Martin's just, just acting out. He'll have a cry and a lie down and feel much better. 
and if you're trying to convince me otherwise, then you are failing. Now, if you're quite done, I am very busy. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm not keeping you from the show, am I? Well, well, you head back. I'll keep myself busy here. Albrecht von Klosen is next, I think. It's quite an old one. Should go up very quickly. Did John put you up to this? You think I'm doing this for him? No. It's just the sort of half-baked scheme he'd come up with. And I'm well aware that you'll do just about anything for him. I and I don't need to read your mind for that one. Do you re... Is it so hard to believe that I hate you as well? No. It's just hard to imagine that you would act on it. <laughs> you think I'm, I'm, I'm what, I'm bluffing? Oh, no. You've made that quite clear. So what? I don't get to be angry. I don't get to burn things. Just, just run around making tea while everyone else gets to actually have feelings. Please get to the point, Martin. Maybe there isn't one, all right? Maybe... Maybe you're I'm just ju wasting my time. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I see. That puts me in a difficult position. Good. You might want to turn the tape off, Martin. How much longer? I don't know. Oh, the others didn't take this long. The others had clear structural weaknesses. This room doesn't. How hard can it be to blow up one building with all this stuff? It depends. Lots of other buildings close around it. I was told to be careful. Right. Fine. So would you say this was supposed to be Churchill or Alfred Hitchcock? <sighs> Jowls like that could be either. I mean, the suit is but Tim, leave it. We should know what's going on, how close they are. We are not ready yet. If you start opening doors and they see you, you sure it's through there. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I saw it a few times while I was here. They've knocked through most of the middle, hollowed it out, made a sort of auditorium. How big? I don't know. Big. I mean, it's not a huge building. I don't know. Tonight was my first time seeing it from the outside. At least in the flesh. I guess it does seem... smaller. You're sure this is the right place? I am. This is definitely where they kept me. Although I don't remember quite this many waxworks. Alright. Just don't want to get this far and find out we're in the... This is the place. We need to see what's going on in there. Just ignore it. We have a job to do. Jesus. What? what? It moved. Right, okay, if they're starting to, uh, we've got to go. No, like, it was just... It's just a flicker in his eyes. Look at this. Look, if the waxworks are coming alive, we need to go. Just shut up and look. Huh. Oh God, they're not waxworks. What are you? Christ, Tim, I, I think... I think maybe we'd better see what's going on in there. All right. All right, on three. Three. <laughs> Holy... Yes. I suppose it is. Done. I am... Um, I think we might need all of it, Daisy. This place is, uh... It's bigger than we thought. Roger that. Give me a couple of minutes. So soon it would be better. What is it? Fear fuels everything. Oh, of course they need it for a, a grand ritual. What the hell is that thing? What's it doing to them? I, I think... I used to call it the anglerfish. It, I knew it took the skin, used it to, to coat people made of sawdust and stuffing, but uh, I suppose I thought it just ate the rest. But no, it had a museum to fill with waxworks. And I guess you don't need skin to sing, to join the choir. <laughs> Sorry. Looks like it wants to know what's going on. <laughs> a pity. You know John listens to all of them. What? You don't want him hearing your big evil speech? Just wanted to spare you the small amount of dignity you have left. <laughs> dignity? All right, yeah. Like the dignity of being trapped in your flat by worms, or sleeping in the archives, clutching a corkscrew, or, or, or fetching drinks for the thing that murdered your friend without you even noticing. 
laughing at all their little jokes, then being left to wander impossible corridors for weeks. Are you done? Not even close, because I've, I've been thinking. It's not like you got this all-seeing thing recently. You've had it the whole time. I remember the way you looked at Sasha after the attack. You knew it wasn't her. And I reckon you knew Prentice was lurking under the Institute too. And you did nothing. Why? Why? Let's just get this over with, shall we? What? Like with Melanie? Just that perfect bit of information to leave me a wreck? Yes. Well, I hope you've got something better than that pathetic dig at my feelings for John. It's baffling, really. Such loyalty to someone who really treats you very badly. Oh, is that supposed to be... what a revelation? <laughs> you know I really should have gone for that. Found something that would finally manage to shatter that precious image you have of him. But, as you say, I am very busy at the moment. So I suppose I'll just have to go with what I had prepared. Do it. Your mother. She's always been... difficult, hasn't she? You take care of her for years, feed her, clean up after her, and now, with her condition degrading even further, she is the one that asked to move into a home, to have it left to the nurses. She's the one that refuses your visits. She's always been... Strong-willed? Stubborn? No. No, Martin. You know the reason. Your mother simply hates you. You just don't know why. It's not your fault. Though I know that isn't any consolation. It's just bad luck, really. How old were you when your father left? Eight? Nine? When your mother began to sicken and he decided he was done with you both. Not old enough to remember him with any great clarity, especially when your mother refused to keep any pictures of him. She never recovered from that betrayal. He just tore her heart right out and took it with him. The thing is, though, Martin, if you ever do want to know exactly what your father looked like, all you have to do is look in a mirror. The resemblance is quite uncanny. The face of the man she hates, who destroyed her life, watching over her, feeding her, cleaning her, looking down on her with such pity. Shut up! Do you want to know what she sees when she looks at you? statements. <laughs> Did you find anything? Uh, yes, I fa Jesus, are you okay? Do we have what we need? I, I think so, yes. He didn't even have a safe, just a, a few locked drawers. It was, it was easy. We... We need to leave. We need to kill him. Look at you. He needs to die. No. No, I... I knew what this was going to be. It's not just for you. If we leave him Melanie. alive... Melanie, please. All right. Let's get these somewhere safe. So what do we do? We can't help them. What, so we're just going to leave them to be skinned alive? What do you want me to do? You brought me in as a distraction, right? What? Let me do it. 
go in. Maybe you can get some of them. Tim, contrary to what you think, I did not bring you here to indulge your death. That's not what this is. No, no. You knew I might not be coming back. I knew none of us might be coming back. And I'm not going to let anyone get killed for nothing. Oh, except for those people in there. They're already dead. Not all of them. I am I not losing you as well. Look, whatever we're going to do, we need to figure it out now. Fine. Look, John, Done. I... Done. What? It's all ready. Here. Oh, I, I thought you would want to uh, do the honours. Safer with you. You know when it needs to happen. All right, okay. Um, come on, let's go. Tim, come on. This isn't right. At least it'll be quick. Tim, please. We have to go. Get back. Behind me. Get the hell away from me! Where's... No! Don't... Daisy! Move. It's, it's Daisy! It, it's me! No! I said, don't move! Daisy! The Magnus Archives is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. Today's episode was written by Jonathan Sims and directed by Alexander J. Newell. To subscribe, view associated material, or join our Patreon, visit RustyQuill.com. Rate and review us online, tweet us at the Rusty Quill. Visit us on Facebook or email us at mail at rustyquill.com. Join our communities on the forum via the website or on Reddit at r slash the Magnus Archives. Thanks for listening.